Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. Happy New Year. It is 2019. And uh, for my first video this year, what I'd like to do is I've got some uh, material here that is silver plated. My wife bought this at a yard sale for two bucks and we tested it and it looked like it was silver. But after I filed some more of the material off, I got down into the base metal and seen that it was actually silver plated. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take a look at how I did those tests on this piece to determine that it was in fact silver plated. And then I'm going to chop it up into pieces and we're going to dissolve everything in nitric acid and I'm going to recover the pure silver off of this piece and get a yield and just see exactly how much silver is on a silver plated piece. And we're going to do that for you right now. All right, to get started here, I was going to take a measurement on it. And the dish here is about 10 and a half inches in diameter. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to get a weight on it so that we can kind of calculate a yield once we get uh, the silver extracted from it and it looks like this thing weighs in at what's it say there 324.5 grams 324.5 grams all right I'm gonna go ahead and write that down silver plate 300 24.5 grams. Just wanted to point something out here. I got a new uh, uh, garment for Christmas from my daughter. She said, Dad, you're sticking your hands in there and exposing your wrists. So she bought me a uh, garment that covers up my wrist. Just wanted to point that out. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Randy. Okay, when we got the piece, we always uh, check the marking on the back here. As, as you can see there, it says Reed and Barton, and then there's a number and a little symbol. Most of the time, but not always, but most of the time, if it's silver, it'll have the word Sterling marked right on it. Here I have a piece that has the word Sterling written right on it on the back there. If that word does not appear on the piece, then chances are high that it's going to be silver plated. This is where I did the initial test. If you look right there, there's a dark streak where I filed deep into the metal and exposed the base metal that's underneath the silver plating. This jar right here is a perfume jar that I bought on eBay. It's got a uh, ground glass lid on it with a uh, dipping piece there. And in here I've got a solution that's made up of dilute nitric acid and some potassium dichromate. I can't remember the exact proportions, but I think I put about one gram of potassium dichromate in here and that added 15 ml of concentrated nitric acid and 15 ml of distilled water to make a uh, the solution that you see here that I used to test silver. When my wife brought this to me initially, I took a file and I rubbed some of the silver off like this and then I took a little bit of the uh, solution and dabbed it on there and as you can see it turns blood red which led me to believe that this was silver being skeptical since it didn't have the sterling silver mark on it I repeated the test 
and I rub well into the metal, like I'm doing here. And then I applied the silver test solution, and that's when it was revealed that this is actually a piece of silver plated material. If you just let it sit there for a while, you'll see that uh, it reacts differently when it hits that base metal. Nah, it's still testing as if it is silver. So this has a real thick coating of silver on it. I've got a little heavier file here. I'm going to really hog some of the metal off of there and get way down in here. And we'll look and see what we got. I mean, this is how you could uh, go awry thinking that you got a piece of of silver when in fact you got a piece of silver plate here it's testing like it's silver Okay, now you can see that it's uh, starting to turn green instead of red, which uh, leads us to believe that there's a, a brass or copper base metal underneath this thick coating of silver. But you notice I had to test it several times to verify that it wasn't solid sterling, but silver plated. And now I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But right here you can see a different colored metal appearing through that appears to be brass. It's like a gold colored metal. Over here on the either side of it is the uh, silver plate. It's got a thick coating of silver plate on it so that it could fool the acid test. If you filed into it a little bit uh, and then put your silver testing solution on it, it appears to be solid silver. So you got to get way down into the metal to hit that base metal. One other thing I'd like to point out with this testing solution is that it does lose its potency over time. Every couple of months what I do is add about a half a gram of uh, potassium dichromate to this jar and then squirt in about an ml or two of uh, nitric acid and freshen it back up. So it does lose its potency over time. I'm going to cut the piece up into little strips, little pieces, so that I can fit it into a beaker and begin dissolving it with some dilute nitric acid. I'm going to put all the pieces in this uh, melt dish here so we can heat them up, incinerate them before we dissolve in nitric acid. Okay, now what we'll do is uh, I'm going to fill the beaker to the 1000 ml level with distilled water. Incinerate each piece of silver plated material to burn off any oils and other impurities that are clinging to the surface of the metal. Now I'll cover it up. 
set it up on some heat over here. About medium heat. And I'm going to measure out 200 ml of concentrated nitric acid. This acid cost me $220 for six 2.5 liter bottles delivered. Now I'm going to add about half of the acid to the metal and the distilled water in this big beaker back here and we'll just let that react. just added that 100 ml of concentrated nitric acid to the distilled water and the uh, silver plated material in the beaker there. The time right now is about 2.20 p.m. and I'm just going to let this go ahead and cook for a while. This is about a 15 minute segment of footage, speed it up 16 times and you'll notice that the solution is turning blue, which is an indication that I have copper going into solution. Here's an example of the reflux reaction by having that cover on top of the beaker. The brown gas condenses on the cover uh, and forms additional nitric acid that drips back down onto the metal and improves the efficiency of the initial dose of nitric that I added to the beaker. Time is 3 p.m. Uh, all that acid, that 200 ml of uh, nitric that I put in there has reacted and uh, I can tell that the reaction is complete when there's no more brown fumes in there so I'm going to measure out another 150 ml of concentrated nitric acid here and slowly add it to the beaker see if we can get the rest of this stuff to go into solution. Now this is going to be hot. I, I did turn the heat up to about medium so this is going to be a little bit uh, hotter than normal. Than earlier I should say. You got to add that acid slow. See how real hot so we get a vigorous reaction when we pour it into the beaker. I only got about 25 ml of the acid in there. I'm going to add it real slow here. been 10 minutes since I started added that adding the uh, second amount of nitric here I've got uh, about 50 ml in there so far go ahead and add a little bit more I got about 
about another uh, 25 30 ml in there. this in I'll have 150 more and I'll put it right up here on the beaker. The experiment has been on the heat now for about an hour and 10 minutes. Get a quick temperature reading here. It's at 178 Fahrenheit, 81.4 Celsius. I'm going to try to get the rest of this acid in there with it so we can mark it off on our beaker here. Once that acid gets down to the bottom of the metal down here that's hot, you'll see it uh, take off on the reaction. So I got 350 total in there so far. First dose was 200, and the second dose was 150. Here you can see some cement silver uh, that has dissolved and then cemented right back out of the solution onto the base metal that's in the uh, plate there. Those are pieces of cement silver floating around in that solution. Time is 4 p.m. I'm an hour and 40 minutes into the experiment. What I'm going to do is go ahead and add some more uh, nitric here. And you can see it reacts pretty good in there. of silver and other um, metals material floating around in there the color is real blue which tells me that we got a lot of copper going in solution so this must have been silver plate over a copper base metal if it was brass it'd be a more of a green color from the zinc brass is an alloy of copper and zinc experiment on for a little over three hours. It is 5.30 p.m. right now. I've added, uh, what is this, two, it's like 800 ml of concentrated nitric acid so far to it. I'm going to stick a rod in here see where I'm at with uh, getting everything to go into solution. Looks like I pretty much got everything. Just a few more pieces. So we'll let this go until we get everything dissolved and then we'll get the silver out of it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, filter this solution, get any dirt out of it, and then we'll add hydrochloric acid to the filtered solution which will precipitate the silver chloride 
and then we'll convert the silver chloride to pure silver silver metal with uh, lye and sugar. So it's almost done, about three hours into the process here. Okay, we've been on that for about three and a half hours. And I just wanted to pull up this piece of silver here. If you notice, what this is, is it's going to be a piece of copper. And I can see silver that's gone into solution, cementing out on that piece of copper. It's little nodules right here that are building up on the piece of copper there. And so that's what kind of happens here as the silver dissolves. There's a, a copper base metal that the silver, as it dissolves, it will come right back out of solution and cement out on the piece of uh, copper. And then more nitric is needed to dissolve it back, put it back into solution. And it'll keep coming right back out of solution, cementing out in accordance with the reactivity series of metals on that piece of copper. And that'll keep happening over and over in a cycle, like consuming the acid as it goes. And that'll keep happening until all the copper is dissolved. So I just wanted to pull that up and show you that. Okay, the time is 7.20 exactly. I've been uh, working on this for exactly five hours at this point. I just added 200 ml more of distilled water and another 100 ml of concentrated nitric acid. This should do it. This should get everything to go into solution and then we'll be ready to cool it off, filter it, and get the silver out of it. All right, here we are. The time is 7.50 which puts us right at five and a half hours exactly. There's nothing left solid in this beaker. Everything is dissolved. I've got an excess of nitric acid in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the heat off and let this cool down. Okay, I'm gonna do a test here. We're gonna get a little bit of the solution to a test tube here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to drop some hydrochloric acid in here and we're going to test see if we got any silver in solution. And as you can see, we get an instant cloud of silver chloride which confirms that we have silver in solution. Now what we'll do, I'm going to let this solution cool off, I'm going to filter it, and then we'll add hydrochloric acid to it and precipitate out all the silver as silver chloride. I've allowed the solution to cool down to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to go ahead and filter it now through this number two medium filter. see the solution is clear it's blue and there's very little sediment at all in the bottom of that beaker I've got the solution completely filtered now as you can see there's a little bit of sediment down in the bottom of the filter there now what we'll do is transfer the uh, filtered solution over here back into this beaker that I've rinsed out. It's crystal clear, no traces of any cloudiness, no sediment.
Okay, to precipitate out the silver, I'm going to be adding hydrochloric acid. Notice that it says muriatic acid and hydrochloric acid, 31.45%. Muriatic acid and hydrochloric acid are the same thing. I'm going to add it to the solution now that's been filtered while I stir and we're going to precipitate out the silver chloride. That should do it. bit of uh, solution that we uh, did the test with. Alright, I've got all the uh, silver precipitated out as silver chloride by adding hydrochloric acid. And so we'll just let this settle overnight and come back get the silver chloride out of there get all the blue liquid off the silver chloride and then uh, convert the silver chloride to pure silver with lye and sugar and then we'll get a yield Now I'm going to transfer the silver chloride into this smaller beaker. And that's what it looks like down in there. Just a cake of silver chloride. Here I'm using hot tap water to rinse the silver chloride free from the uh, blue solution there. It's better to do many small rinses rather than fewer large rinses. If I uh, wanted to uh, get very high purity silver, I could continue to rinse until all the blue is completely removed from the silver chloride and I could verify that by doing tests with ammonia to verify that all the copper is out of the solution. But for this experiment, I'm not going to expend the extra time to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and get most of the uh, copper rinsed out and then we'll get a yield on how much silver comes out of this silver plate. Okay, I've got the uh, silver chloride rinsed out pretty good. Blue, most of the blue color is gone. If I wanted to, I could keep rinsing this and then testing the rinse water with ammonia until I got absolutely every trace of copper out of there. And then uh, once I converted this with my sugar, it'd be 999 fine silver. Very pure fine silver. What I have here is some lye, which is sodium hydroxide. I found that one of these uh, handheld mixers works pretty good for uh, getting all that silver chloride converted to silver oxide with the lye. 
using a stirring rod. I could do it with a stirring rod, but it doesn't doesn't do it very well. Uh, this thing will convert it almost instantly. So what we're going to do is I've got the last charge of hot water on here. I'm going to pour this out. This is just rinse water. Notice it's a pale blue color. So there's still going to be just a touch of copper in there. That's okay. For the purposes of this video, we're just trying to get a yield on the amount of silver. So it's perfectly okay to have that little bit of copper in there with it. And now what I'm going to do is add some cold tap water here. Cold tap water going in. I'm going to fill it up to about the uh, Oh, 300 ml level on the beaker there. Now what I'll do is I'll insert our uh, handheld mixer here and give it a stir. See how that works? And then I'm going to start adding small amounts of sodium hydroxide to convert the silver chloride into silver oxide which is black. You'll see the uh, silver chloride turn a grayish color. First it'll turn brown and gray and black. Black's the color we want. Here we go. said that you can go a little bit too far with the uh, sodium hydroxide and uh, add too much sodium hydroxide and cause the silver to convert to silver hydroxide. I don't know if there's any truth to that but you gotta watch out so you don't over add the sodium hydroxide here. I think we got it just about right here. Disassemble the hand mixer here, get it out of here, rinse it all off, and rinse all the uh, silver oxide down into the bottom of the beaker there. All right, I've converted the uh, silver chloride to silver oxide with the uh, sodium hydroxide or lye. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to add some sugar and we're going to convert the silver oxide to pure silver metal with sugar. This is sugar just like you'd put on your breakfast cereal. I'm just going to start adding it in and uh, watch what happens. This is, this is an exothermic reaction. It could get real hot here. So here we go, add the sugar. You can see the color changing from black to gray there. You can see a little bit of sugar, uh, silver building up on the side of the beaker there as it converts. I can see silver down at the bottom of the beaker now. I'm going to add a little bit more sugar. And like I said earlier, this is exothermic. That beaker is going to get real hot down there. It could start boiling here in a minute. It's at 158 Fahrenheit. I put cold tap water in there, remember? Uh, 70.4 Celsius. 
I can see the sugar built up, or not the sugar, the silver rather, on the bottom of the beaker down there. It's all converted to silver now. Pure silver metal, as if by magic. Here's our pure silver metal powder that's uh, been converted from the silver chloride. What we'll, do, what we'll do now is go ahead and let this settle and then I'll uh, start rinsing all the uh, lye and sugar off of that silver. And then we'll get it out and get it to a melt dish and get a yield on it. Now I'm going to start rinsing the silver with just plain warm tap water out of the tap. I'm going to pour it into this beaker back here because there might be a, a tenth or so of silver that accumulates in there and I'll recover that later on. But for now we just want to get a yield on the amount of silver that we got off of that uh, silver plated item there. It's just regular tap water going in. Like before, I'm just going to rinse it and get most of that uh, lye and sugar rinsed off of there so we can melt it. Just want to do a quick review where we're at here. Here's the uh, the copper that was rinsed off of the uh, silver chloride. That'll go into waste treatment. This is the sodium hydroxide and sugar. It's probably got a little bit of silver in it and when it settles I'll uh, siphon that out and get that little bit of silver out of there. And then here's our pure silver that we uh, converted with lye and sugar from the uh, gold plated item. I'm going to get this into a filter now and we'll get it into a melt dish and melt it. I've got a uh, small filter set up here. I'm going to transfer the silver from this beaker into the filter so we can get it in a melt dish and get it melted up into a little button. cement silver in the filter here that's what it looks like it looks like wet cement it's probably going to be a couple ounces here maybe maybe an ounce more than I thought and I've got a dish a melt dish here that I've used to uh, melt pure silver I'm going to melt it in this melt dish right here see if I can get it out of this funnel into the melt dish like that. All right, I'm going to transfer it over here to my melt table. And we'll see if we can melt this up into a nice little bar. Okay, here's our little piece of silver from the silver plated item. It's not very pretty, but let's see what it, we got for a weight here. Looks like 15.2 grams of pure silver. 15.2 grams of pure silver from that 324 gram silver plated item. Okay, we started out with a uh, silver plated plate that weighed 324.5 grams. 
we got 15.2 grams of pure silver divided by 324.5 equals 0 0.046 or 4.6 percent pure silver in that silver plated item I used uh, thirteen dollars and twenty cents worth of acid two dollars worth of electricity that's uh, fifteen dollars and twenty cents right there the value of silver today is at like what sixteen bucks per troy ounce and this is a half an ounce of silver so we've got eight dollars worth of silver from the 324 gram silver plated plate okay that will conclude the silver plated recovery video I got 15.2 grams of pure silver it's probably 99% 99.5% pure silver here from that 324 gram silver plated plate so now we've got kind of an idea of what to expect from silver plated items obviously it costs way more to get the silver than what the silver is worth so I don't think it's a, a viable uh, profit making uh, venture here but that's not what I was trying to do I'm not trying to make a profit I was just trying to uh, get the silver off of the silver plated item so that we can have some kind of gauge to go by on what to expect if we try to process silver plated items now I'm going to uh, continue my stock pot refining series I've got all the uh, waste materials that I use to clean up the mess from the stockpot refining disaster that, that I had. I saved all that and what I'll do is there's several hundred dollars worth of metal in there. So I'm going to go ahead and process that and get the metal from it and make another video on the stockpot refining series. So watch for that one. Plus, I have yet to get any platinum metal from any of the refinings that I've done so far. I've got some uh, platinum salt saved up. I've got some platinum pieces of jewelry that I've got saved up. And uh, what I'm going to do is do a uh, platinum refining video and get us some platinum metal from one of these videos coming up soon. So that will conclude the silver plated recovery video thanks for watching all right here we go we're gonna stamp three tips right into this little bar here there it is